Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing the kind of Let's Look At series we're doing, and today we are going to be reviewing the Conniver's Kunai, one of my favourite weapons in the game. I'll see you on the pub. I've decided to put on some better hats that better suit the seriousness of this um, epic loadout. You know, e e all, that, all that amazing stuff, we're gonna be, no, no mercy and all that. Anyway, anyway, that all aside, there's a man here we can get our health from. You see, that's this is the start of using the kunai. You need to find your the first man, the, the only difficult remote thing related to the kunai is getting your first stab. And if you're playing in pubs, or even like lobbies to an extent, there's always one player that's not looking where they're going. Apparently that was that pyro as well, but anyway. You start out with relatively low health, as you would know. It used to be a lot worse. All my time with the kunai is with the worst kunai, so as far as I'm concerned, it's like unbelievably strong now, because I'm used to it. You used to start out with like 60 health or something, and like, <sighs> everything would kill you. You and well, all right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm used to the kunai killing you on everything. It's a lot easier now to get your first stab, and even after that, you get like a max of hundred, like 210 health. Now you used to get like two, like 180 or something. I always forgot the exact number because it always decays really fast. But anyway, once you've gotten the first stab, which typically isn't, I'm gonna butter my fuse today. Come here. Probably not the best idea because he's got a rocket launcher and all that, but I thought it would be kind of funny if I could actually hit that. Yeah. Once you've got that 210 health, you're basically solid. Like, you can do what I just did, which is play like an idiot, run in front of a soldier <laughs> with his rocket launcher, and hit him like three times with a- There's all the blue team here. Don't you dare shoot me with your huntsman. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, the, the difficulty used to be that, oh no, I've only got 60 health, I need to backstab that guy, but there's like a sentry watching, or there's a combo and they're turning around a bunch. You don't need to worry about that, because there's always someone who just isn't really paying attention to what they're doing, like this sniper running backwards with the Gerati out, or this scout who's we, who's us, we're that scout. Did he notice us? This is a classic little spot, by the way, oh look. There we go. So that, that sniper there. Now we've got our full health, and now we can go- Oh no, we're on full health. Now we can go around and uh, find a man to poke. So this, like, sp like, spawns are typically a good old spot. This guy's got no hats on, he's walking in a straight line. That's a- it's an easy old pokeroo in the back there, but... Another thing that they buffed a huge amount was the kunai used to give you no minimum HP. So if you backstab someone with one health, you'd get one health. Nowadays, if someone's on, like, 20 HP and you backstab them, you get, like, I don't know what the minimum is. I should probably know this, but I want to think you get like a minimum of like 60 health or something off of them. It's a fair old amount. So just any picks you can get are good. Even if you see someone on like 20 health, normally I'd say, you know, shoot them. We're not going to switch teams now. I'm having fun. Oh shit. Normally you'd want to shoot someone on like 20 HP because, you know, it's obvious. It's the easiest way to kill them without putting yourself in any danger is to sit at a range and spam them a bit. That guy was being a bit weird, though. I thought there would be more enemies, but look. You've got to be a little bit smart. When there's people running around and spamming, all like that, you've got to be smart and put on a soldier disguise, which no one ever checks, and you can get invisible spies this way, who don't have backs. But this guy's only got 40 health. Oh, I want to get the backstab there. We could also maybe get an epic trick stab on this pirate. It's like the only knife as well that it's, there's any point in doing remote trick stabs on. Like, you have to... Not you have to, but being able to... Like, corner stab people and jump stab people is really useful. Just because you need the stab. It's not like you need the stab to get the kill. You need the stab to survive. And anything that'll make that stab more and more and more possible. Like using the Invis Watch. Invis Watch is basically... Can you right-click on me? I know you're an enemy spy, but can you... Maybe not. <laughs> anything you can do... To, anything you can use to make the stab easier just makes the knife easier. Because if you're good at playing knife spy, this is, like, the best knife to use. If you're, if you're knife spying purely in a pub and having fun. Don't use the big earner, because that thing... That thing's got no longevity to it. Someone shoots you once, you're dead. It might be fun to have a speed boost and go all whippity whoop around people, but if there's like one soldier who's looking at you, just immediate death awaits you. Am I going to have to immediately re-lobby? Just found a map? <laughs> oh my god. It's been taking me about ten minutes to just find a pub. We'll continue on the next one. I'm... Oh my god. Bad water! This is a good map. Look at this unbelievable variety we're receiving today. We're playing on a server with, like, bots and people with no avatars. But it's not Gold Rush, so we can show off other payload maps. There you go. Anyway, as I was- as my train of thought was leaving me, I was trying to talk about ways to make your stabbing stuff easier. Invis Watch is basically... Placement the weapon. Whoops. So, for example, with the Dead Ringer, you are loud. Your placement relies on them not seeing you. Guess what weapon makes you invisible, so they literally can't see you? It's the Invis Watch. That's what it- Oh god, I'm being shot at by a sentry while I'm standing still. That was a bit rude. Bit rude of you, game, not to disable sentries in the pre-game. 
Oh, by the way, cool little fact. This spot here in Badwater, you can hurt yourself if you jump into it like this. And you have to do it right. There you go. You build up a bit of full speed, you hold crouch, and you can take a bunch of health. For some reason, it didn't take that much damage there, but you can kill yourself in spawn just by the, just by doing that. It's now, By the way, this is proof. If you're unsure about how full damage works in TF2, or you wonder why sometimes you seem to just trip over your knee and take full damage from full damage, uh, this is our standing still guy for today, if he wants to. Yeah, there we go. You, uh, your, your full speed, sorry, your full damage is based off of your velocity. So in spawn, what you do there is basically build up a bunch of velocity, and you fall, even though you're falling like an inch, you're falling at like a million miles an hour, uh, just, to, just to confuse people and use two different systems. Hence why you take a shitload of damage in spawn. And that is why sometimes you just seem to randomly die from fall damage despite falling down like nothing. It's because probably someone shot you on the head and it forced your model down. Whoops. Wait, if he walks backwards, there we go. See, normally I'd shoot him, but it's a pub, so he's probably not going to turn around. People don't like using their mice, I find. Like, there's an invisible spy there. Oh, I'm a friend, don't mind me. See, look, I'm a scout, I'm jumping and crouching and all sorts. Oh, we're not meant to shoot him, we're meant to- We're meant to stand on top of a staircase and then do this. He did it! He's a spy main and he did the- the- the stair thing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what a horrible- what a horrible mindset. <laughs> oh dear, be nice to each other, be kind. It doesn't matter how someone plays the game, be nice. Some people were arguing on my Discord about some YouTube channel and they, the way they didn't like how he made videos, and I just thought that was just so silly. He enjoys playing the game, let him do it. Anyway, that all aside. Who knows for stabbing people? Invis Watch makes you stab people better because you can right click, go all spooky, and then hide behind them. And it's very good. And the left one show kind of complements that really well because it makes positioning like instant. If you see a position and you're running the Invis Left one show, you've, you've got it. Badwater first behind the sentry, you can just run up there. No worries. Butter knife. Also, the butter knife still does 40 damage, hence why it's the best thing in the game. Oh, that was- I, I thought that was hoping that was going to be a spy who was going to try and trick stab. Did that heavy just look us in the eye and then turn around? As you can see, by the way, this loadout is like... Next to gun spy and playing really, really passively, this is like the easiest way to get any kill streak as spy in the game. It's just, you have so much HP. All you have to do is kill one mindless player, and then you've got enough HP to survive two rockets directly to the face, like... That is really, really broken. The the big earner will you will die before one rocket. This thing lets you survive, and then if you're bleeding or you're on fire or any status effects like that, you can just kunai it away. It is wonderful. Look at that, look at that positioning. I didn't have to dead ring her away and you know lose my ability to play. Come on, you're actually going to run away. I was going to butter knife duel you, and you ran away from a forty health. Oh my. What a weird man. He had a big old sword. Do you think he would go for the melee duel? Anyway, yeah, we died for a rocket there because he weren't really paying attention, but... Basically, while I tank, this thing makes you, like, a super duper... You know, what, what's the Dracula Alucard? The guy from, um... You guy from that game where you play as Dracula at the start and then you lose all your items to death and... That man likes it. It basically makes you a super tank. So once you get that one kill, you're perfectly fine. But the thing that makes me like it so much is if you're you're in like a really stupid position. Say there's like 80 red people on the cart, and you backstab one of them, but then you're suddenly on like six health. Everyone's shooting at you. You can get another backstab, and then immediately be at 210, and just you will never die as long as you're getting picks. The health regen is just like unbelievably good. To put it into another perspective, Terraria had like those um. Excuse me. Terra Terraria had those, um, what do you call it? The little Dracula knives or whatever they were called. I don't remember what they were called. It's like, they were like stupidly overpowered. And those things gave you like two health on hit with a projectile. Oh shit! I'm an idiot. <laughs> I meant to like wait for the sentry gun to be ticking away. So we could, um. Where's your back? Does he not? There we go. Invis watch as well. While it didn't work there, because the sentry for some reason decides to kill me. Normally, this it, the invis watch lets you get away from sentries from killing you. Unfortunate that he shot his rockets, but had it have just been bullets, yeah, I think you only take like 40 damage. If the sentry's purely shooting you with bullets and you just right click in front of it immediately, you'll only take like half your health. So like, I don't know if I'm getting away. Half the time, the invis kunai is just better than the dead ringer. Like with the dr, you got one runaway, and then you're gonna go and get your cloak back, or you gotta go and shoot some guy to actually do anything. This thing like. The kills basically guarantee themselves half the time because, I don't know, a lot of the time people don't really look around or look up or look down or 
or look all around, up in the air or on the ground, come for a walk, come for a fly and see. That's um, not spirited. Where was that? There was like a really old show on the BBC about dogs, and it had Pippin, Pippin the doggo. This is this is this is British TV, by the way. When I was young, there was a show from about like a nice young, a nice old Welsh lady, and she used to go around on adventures in her spotted aeroplane with her with her. I think it was a sheepdog called Pippin. Anyway, that's 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 nothing related to the Canivers Kuno, but I thought it would be an, a lovely story, just because I had that on the mind. Um, what was it called, though? That's going to actually kind of annoy me. Basically, you can run Gunsmoke to stay alive forever, but to get kills, you kind of have to, like, think and shoot them and aim and all this nasty stuff that no one wants to have to do. That wasn't your back, eh? I killed the... I killed the... I killed the- I did kill the NG with his own sentry, so I think that's alright. Anyway, you can kind of see the downside of the kunai there. If you do miss the stab, which happens, it's... You know, back stabs can be a bit funky. If they are standing nearish to a- oh, that sentry is shootable, by the way. 21 HP, you might as I know there's a sniper who's gonna, like, immediately kill me. Okay, there's two- there's two sentries, I forgot this is a valve pub. I was just gonna shoot it once without sapping it, like this. What are you- Jesus Christ, he's using the reserve shooter! Horrifying gentleman, there's always one. <laughs> I just want to play with the knife, and go around and stab people, and make hoo-hoo noises, and just reserve shooter pyros, and weird... Anyway, the backstabs on people that are just like walking away from spawn are basically guaranteed, because half the time they don't bother spy checking, they're just walking in a straight line, they find it really boring, so they'll just continue walking. Uh, we probably shouldn't be standing in this sniper sightline, but what's the chance he's going to shoot as well? He, we're invisible, eh? It's like zero, right? Yeah, the, the downside is like this. You're in a situation... How did you know there's a spy here, you funky man? Go away. Stop Stop this immediately. Yeah, you're going to have to kind of hope that, like, there's someone who stands in front... Oh, the demo man just suicides his way in, and then you... The sniper stands in the way of the engineer! He's body blocking me. He's like... Really, really good at spy checking. Hmm. Anywho, as I've tried to say the last like two times I've spawned, you can kill people outside of spawn pretty easy. Like on on defense, it's like a really. On defense, the kunai is really, really good because people coming out of spawn on blue just don't tend to look around or care. That was a max. Okay. Okay. Just whatever. Whereas, whereas on offense like this, this is the this is like the worst time for a kunai. It's a last push. It's a payload map. Their spawns are right there. There's everyone spawning at the same time. They can see you through walls. Engineers can sit inside spawn and have defense against you. You kind of have to wiggle around a bit and click on people like this and run away and then hope the sniper doesn't track you perfectly with his uh, SMG or the demo doesn't spend eight sticky bombs trying to kill one spy in a pub. Yeah, where's their teleporter? Because you can go through- one thing you can do, disguise as engineer, pull out the wrench and go through a teleporter, and you get this kind of trail around your feet. It looks really believable. Let me just quickly- I didn't- I, d I missed the engineer, apparently. I- I shot his sentry. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, there's a spy up there. We could maybe backstab. So yeah, yeah, The only stuff you can really do on offense with the kunai is- Hope that there's someone like this overextending, then you can get a bit of health off of them, and then you've really got to think, because when it goes to, like, taking out sentries and stuff, no one in this pub's going to help you. There's gonna be, like, demo knights standing around spy checking, and... Yeah, there's an engineer exit there, so what we can do? We can do, like, a pyro disguise, run through it, get the- get the trail, be like, Oh, I'm here to spy check, I'm a friend, hello. Uh, not really. I'm here to get an epic trick stab on you with- He's using the home wrecker! So you shoot it. Then the home record does nothing, and then you madly melee and hope you kill him with your melee. Never mind, there's 80 hundred people trying to kill me. But yeah, that's also, by the way, that's how you counter the home wrecker. It's like a really annoying melee. No one really uses it, thank God, but like, it's it's a pretty annoying. The way you counter it is you have to shoot the sentry. As obvious as it may or may not sound, but in situations like that, you shouldn't just re-sap over and over again because you're never going to kill it. If you shoot it, I think you can... Kill it fairly far. Don't mind me, Pyro. Yeah. You can also do that. Like, if pe even if people are walking together, you can, like, bait them into your team. So you I knew I was safe from the Pyro there. Bullet spread. <laughs> I might have missed him normally, but, uh, you know. In a perfect world, men like me would not exist. Well, sometimes they also just don't turn around at all, but... Oh, don't mind me. Oh. Yeah, we go. If you're invisible when you go through a teleporter, by the way, you don't get the trail. 
What are you doing, Demo? He's he was standing on the sentry gun, spy checking. What a weird gentleman. Well, maybe that's what he was doing. He is running full Demo Knight loadout, so I guess he's just trying to farm spies. This is a this is a tip for Demo Knight with the Islander. The, the Dead Ringer gives you a head technically. Attacking last is quite tricky. So we're going to go over things that you can do. There's people here who are trying to stop the cart. They're horribly, horribly distracted by the cart. People like that are going to turn around, obviously, but then you're basically killing them. Like, this guy's not killing the cart. A scout came in and killed him with a crit melee, so that's great. Uh, also, by the way, I'm going on to so many tangents, but this is a useful one. The Invis Watch, if you stand on a level 1 teleporter, could keep you going infinitely, but I think there might be a glow in your stomach sometimes. It seems a bit weird. Maybe you have to be undisguised for it or, or what, but... Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't shoot anything. I'm waiting for the Engineer, and then I can... Not die to a crit, please, and just... Yep, there we go. Try and get a second one. Oh, so yeah, people just sometimes are not very... He's got more range than me. He's got extra range. I don't like it when uh, people give an exact guide for trick stabs, because most of it relies on the enemy person either being good or being bad. If people are bad, like the, the Hatless Engineer down there, they won't hear the backstabs. So also, you have to be undisguised so they don't see you through walls. It's a great mechanic. People who don't listen, you can't trickstab them because they won't hear your backstab and you can't predict what they're going to do. I would have assumed that Hatless Engineer was going to hear the saps and stuff and just walk up the ramp mindlessly. I could just dump over his head because he's holding his W key. Oh god, I just had a huge coughing fit. That's awful. <laughs> anyway, good players you can predict, bad players you can't predict. So the kunai is like really good against decent players half the time because you can you can expect they're going to be like oh that's a spy i'm just going to shoot him so either you can cloak and run away cloak into a get into a better position or you can shoot them back whereas with bad players you have no idea what they're going to do if you decloak on top of their sentry they're not going to like turn around and melee you so you you can't just you know flip a bit and backstab the other side you didn't, they could they could like just suddenly pull out a rubik's cube out of their pocket and just complete it in front of you or sit on offense and just randomly left click and spin up something really confusing that you can't quite understand do you want a high five so yeah kunai's like a bit of an anti-counter what's the other word it's it's um super resist it's super effective bad players are super effective against the kunai they go to put it into pokemon terms but here we go we're on defense now this is like a time we can get big old big old kill streaks hopefully as things go our way because uh often with good players as well they'll see you from a mile away and then start shooting you and that's a that's like a really good ticket just to say well Nice to launch that my pack. That's a really, really good ticket just to say, yeah, I'm getting out of there. I'm not, I don't have anything to do with this. Are you, yeah. So good players can also help you quite a bit because you just know it's, you don't have to think in your head, hey, should I escape? Should I try and stay? Because realistically, you should just get out of there. So yeah, on defense as well, as I'm saying. But the good thing about, on def uh, good thing about playing on defense is there's no incentive for them just to hide and spawn. So it was difficult to do anything on last there, because they were hiding in spawn. There was no reason for them not to, really. On this side, they have to come to you. And because they have to come to you, there's this huge walkway they have to go past. And often they're not... <coughs> oh, sorry. Often they don't really have to look around. Because, I mean, what are they going to look around at? The Heavy or you? The Heavy's probably more likely to kill them. There's also an invisible spy around here. Here he is. That was a little weird. The Engineer's saying, nice going, partner. Also, um... <coughs> Oh god, I keep losing my voice. Um, if you're a good player, don't use the spy voice line. It makes it really obvious that you know it's... I don't know, it's like some people either do it as like an intimidation technique or to let their team know. But by letting by, by letting the spy know that you know they're there... Oh god, this is going to go into like some super deep like... <laughs> you, because you know they know, but basically... If someone believes me, I think that I can kill them, because they think that I'm on their side. Whereas, if they yell, spy, I know for certain that they don't believe me, and I know how to work around that. Well, I, it's, I, I had no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> when someone yells, spy, you know how to avoid them. You want to be unpredictable. Being unpredictable is like the easiest way to not die. So if you're playing as any class, not just spy, yelling out spy around here half the time is like, hello to the spy. You know who I am, so therefore I'm predictable now. I'm, you can, you're giving me a look into your mind as the spy when you say something. 
Normally, the only way to read a player's mind is to base it off their movements and their decisions. If they're using a voice, mind, the voice line, they're literally just saying to you, Hey, these are what I'm thinking right now. Spies on the mind. You know, I, I don't know really where I wanted to go with that. But basically, if you're going to kill a player, don't kill them if they're yelling spy around here. You're going to kill me with your rocket when you're rocket jumping, aren't you? I was, I was like 50% certain he was going to crit there and kill me while he didn't know I was there. Oh, also, let's run, Jay. Still solid. See a dude at the range? You can still shoot him. If they're on, like, 60 health, you only have to shoot him, like, three or four times. Does this scout know I'm still up here? Yeah. Bushes as well. The bush strat. People don't really check... People don't tend to check their very distinct corners of their vision, like where I am now. That corner there, they'd have to look... They have to go way out of their way. What are you doing? Also, people taunting. People taunting is, like, just a kill me sign when you're using the corner. It's like, hello. I nearly died there. It's like a hello. Do you need full health? Well, I'm standing perfectly still, so just go wild on me. And it makes me happy. We can get this soldier up here, by the way, if we do a bit of clever platforming and he doesn't- We don't die to, like, a sniper from behind, which is a possibility. Or he just runs away. That's another way we won't get him. That's a platforming thing you can do to get up here, by the way. This scout might come up to try and join us, but hopefully he's not going to look directly as in the eye and we can just- That wasn't a backstab, eh? Well, that's all right. I was hoping we could have gotten the scout there. You can kind of do a lot of... Like, this is one of also the few weapons where doing the weird, like, Assassin's creed -y, uh, what, what do you call it? Parkour? This is one of the weird parkour weapons where it's actually useful. Because, A, getting away on low health is really good if you can parkour stuff. Like, if you're on low health and there's loads of people spy-checking you, jumping around on uh, props and trying to get away is, like, the easiest way to survive compared to just hoping that they don't hit you. And also, on the other plus side, you see, because, by the way, also, with the Dead Ringer, it doesn't really matter if you're parkouring, because you're only going to take, like, five damage anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you escape perfectly or not. With the Kunai, it kind of teaches you a good habit of trying to escape without being seen or taking any damage. Uh, oh, I completely forgot the bonus. This lets me show it off wonderfully. The huge health buff you get lets you do that. If you invis, you get like a 20% bonus to uh, defense or something like that. If you invis and then someone shoots you with a rocket, you can just surf and go wild and go really far and go nuts. That soldier knows who we are. Well, he sure showed us. Haha! -ha! I've gone on so many tangents and just left them on complete. Let's, let's, tie up these, let's tie up these conversation tangents while I'm at it. The damage boost. It's very, very good when it comes to surfing. There you go. That's one tangent covered up. It's really fun if you want to run around and surf off rockets. That's the first tangent done. Second tangent, bad players. You can kill good players because you can read them, but bad players half the time you can't, and the other time they're like super easy because they don't look where they're going. Third tangent, if you're playing on defense, it's really good. If you're playing on offense, you have to think a bit harder because on, uh, on defense they have to walk to you, on offense you have to walk to them. This is a very good come at me weapon where... Like, this guy here, he's not... Even though this area is completely silent, if we just hide behind a corner and then right-click... You see he's running the Mantreads, so he's probably also... Like, Mantreads are bad right now, I know they're trying to update them in the next update, but... If someone's using purposefully a bad weapon and they're taking a long route, you can kind of guess they're a bad player. That's the free pick. Now I've got 210 health, I've got the, like, 12 seconds of invisibility the Letter on J gives me. I doubt this guy's gonna follow me for 24 seconds that I can run between these two ammo packs. It's unlikely. Third tangent. Uh, what was the third tangent? Okay, so, fourth tangent. Snipers. Thai snipers are, hello, do you want to have, like, a free kill every, like, 30 seconds? Go for it. S people spy-checking wildly. Hey, you go, we're just knocking off tangents non-stop. We're learning and discussing so much. What a useful commentary. <laughs> people spy-checking like this. They're not pushing the cart and they're not killing my teammates. They're basically shooting a ghost. Like, they don't know where I am, hopefully. They don't know where I am. So as far as I'm concerned, I've basically killed them. They're just wasting their time trying to kill a spy. That guy really shouldn't have started chasing me. He's on 75 HP. Yeah, come kill the spy. Some people also, here's, an, here's a 50th tangent, just to keep them going. Just, just keep rolling off the tongue. People really like killing spies. People that really like killing spies tend to become really, really weird with their decision-making. And they'll just run at you on, like, five health, and they'll be in their mind, like, well, this guy can't kill me, I'll be perfectly fine. And then they'll exit spawn yelling, there's a spy, and take the long route around, just to try and get you on the ammo pack. Like this, look at him, look, he's gonna, look, oh, where's the spy? Oh, yeah, that's where you go. 
So anyway, you can waste a huge amount of time. You see how he's like spy checking scouts and stuff. Like he's just spent the last like minute of his of his round doing bollocks for his team. Not to use a rude, uh, you know, anti annually rude word. I'm sorry, YouTube YouTube advert companies. I said a rude naughty word. Please make it so I can pay rent this month. <laughs> anyway, like the there wasn't was, was another tangent we can go off. Now I think we've ticked most of the ones off. Oh, he's going to kill us unless we hide. Oh, here we go. This is a great tangent. This is one that I, that was I was starting and then I completely forgot to continue with. The kunai can teach you some pretty good habits because you have like no health at the start. It really does teach you to be careful with your picks, which you should be. You should think either that pick's important and it's worth my life. Or that picks really easy and it will keep me going. And there's no middle ground. You don't, it's not like with the Dead Ringer, which kind of teaches that teaches you the habit of try over and over again, even if it's bad, and eventually you'll learn what's a good situation to be in. This thing, there is no middle ground. If you fuck up, most oh sorry, if you um, what's a polite word for fuck that YouTube would like? If you piddle around, I guess. If if you piddle around, you'll just straight up die. Like you have no health. If someone turns around and shoots you, and they spy check a bunch. You'll die. This thing teaches you to, like, avoid people. And it also, like, when you run it with the invis, shit's got a really, really high skill ceiling. Like, the, the kunai invis skill ceiling is, like, incredibly high because the knife, it's got a lot of mechanics around it, you know, mostly in all the little trick stabby stuff and being able to pick a specific target. And this thing is just super that. Like, you can go around and you can kill loads of people and live forever. You don't have to run between health packs. You don't have to run between ammo packs because you've got the letter on J and it's just. It's smart. You learn to escape without being seen or taking damage because if you, if someone, if a pyro sets you on fire, you're screwed. You have to kill someone to survive. But it also gives you a good opportunity to survive. If you happen to kill the pyro, you're using the stock knife, say. You've got 30 health, you're on fire, and you're running away. Even if you kill the pyro, it's basically just a haha, screw you, pyro. It's not really going to help you live. Whereas with the kunai, if you get that pyro pick, you've got another opportunity to escape. Which is what the Dead Ringer does for free, basically, is you press right click and you get to escape. The kunai is you got a really good kill and you smartly escaped using your feet. There's no super cloak. Like with the DR, if you bump someone, I didn't whiff that by the way, don't worry. You didn't see that. <laughs> with the uh, with the Dead Ringer, you get a bit of, you get a thing called super cloak for a couple of seconds, which is basically if someone bumps you or shoots you, you aren't like blinked, they don't visibly see you. With the invis, obviously that never happens. So you never, you'd, when you run away with the Dead Ringer, often you'll just kind of do it really lazily and just run straight through them because you know you can. This thing teaches you, you know, a, to be a bit more smart about your running away. Whoops. You got me. Don't chase me for 50 minutes. Ha ha. We're getting him. Just, I, I, I don't know how much I can just gush on and on about how it's a really, really good knife and I want more people to use it. Like, it's really strong. It's even good in Highlander. Like, I'm not, I'm not taking the, I'm not taking the mick. It's like, in Highlander, run Invis, run Kunai, run L'Etranger, you can run around and just pick the flank non-stop, and then when it comes to picking the combo, you can actually, like, kill most of them, because in the amount of time that, like, you know, the heavy shooting, you just kill the medic, the heavy shoots you for, like, a couple of seconds. That's enough time still to get the demo man. Normally you just immediately die because you don't have that much HP. This thing, like, basically doubles your health. It's really, really good. Please use it. Don't run away from the Kunai. Weird demo man. I was hoping the soldier there was going to take his HP, and then he'd just look at me with sadness. What else? It teaches you a good, I mean... Okay, maybe it doesn't teach you a good idea. I think everyone should use their gun for, like, most things, because I think it's a very reliable way to play the game. It doesn't rely on the enemy very much, it relies on you being good, which I like. I don't, I don't like playing the game in a mechanic that relies on enemy players being bad, that's why I like shooting. But anyway, if you're not very good with shooting, Kunai, Invis, this loadout, just run it. It is, like... You will learn to become a really good knife spy really fast for reasons we've spoken about, i.e. you screw up once, you're fucked, but you do well, you get rewarded really generously. It's, I mean, I guess it's a risk or reward, really, at the end of the day, but it's a fun risk reward. The other one is obviously the L'Etranger, not the L'Etranger. What? That your eternal reward. I guess I was putting them together because they were in a set. I shouldn't have done that. The spy might have missed the backstab. The Your eternal reward is the other, like... Not trick stab knife, but it's the other s knife spy knife. I want to say a big earner maybe, but that's not really a longevity thing. It's more of I guess I guess chain stab knife. Yeah. So like the kunai and the eternal reward. Kunai is miles better. Previously they were like kind of similar. Um, Silent killer, by the way, really really broken mechanic. It means that when you backstab someone, they don't make a really loud screaming noise and it doesn't show up in the feed. Eternal Reward is really good for that, and also you could run it with the Dead Ringer and have Silent Cloak. But nowadays you can't do that. 
and the kunai gives you 210. It's good. This thing, if you want to run around and exclusively use your knife, the bonus for it is immense. Whereas if you run around and exclusively use the knife with the stock knife, you do have to go and health get health packs. And if you're running the stock revolver, you can't cloak forever. You do kind of have to play in bursts with the stock loadout, i.e. bursts of being bursts of being visible, shooting, stabbing, whatever. This thing, you can just run around being visible forever. If you see a player, you can stab them. Oh, we died. Oh, our team lost even. With the Dead Ringer, it's a bit of a, you know, if you see them, you can shoot them because there's no downside. This thing is, if you can see them, you can stab them, which I like. I think it's like, this is the opposite of the guns by loadout. It's total, total knifey stuff, and it's the best I think you can do with it. Anyway, all that ranting aside, I have no idea if I managed to keep that as a consistent commentary, because I kept going on tangents. Too, too long, too long didn't read and all that. It's a really good knife. I really love it. To my knowledge, it's never getting changed, or they're not, they don't have any intentions on changing it, so if you want to run Knife Spy Loadout, do this. If you want to run a phone loadout, loadout, do this. Want to run a hard loadout to practice on, do this. It's really good. It teaches you good habits, because if you fail, you get uh, punished, and if you do well, you get hugely rewarded, and I love it. But anyway, I apologize for the really tangenty commentary. I really like this knife, so it's quite hard to keep a straight head on while I'm just basically making a video gushing about it. But uh, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Feel free to leave any comments if you have suggestions for stuff you'd like to watch as well, because I've been kind of doing this series lately. If you have, like, something you'd like to see, do let me know. And again, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>